Hi, it's Kelly Campbell, your co-host. Welcome back to the Legal Nurse Podcast. We're here with Dr. Linda Olson. We're in for a treat today. Dr. Linda Olson is a licensed psychologist and psychotherapist. Welcome, Linda. Thank you, Kelly. I'm thrilled to be with you today. Oh, we're glad you're here. As a psychologist and psychotherapist, as well as a victim advocate with over 30 years in private practice, specializing in domestic violence, abuse, and trauma, Dr. Olson has a dual master's in clinical social work and clinical psychology from the University of Iowa and a doctorate in clinical psychology from the Georgia School of Professional Psychology her postdoctoral work has focused on developing treatment programs for those who experience childhood domestic violence and struggle with its impact. Dr. Olson is a board member of the Childhood Domestic Violence Association and is the chapter founder and president of the Association Georgia Chapter. She has dedicated her life to raising awareness of childhood domestic violence in helping deliver the solutions to those affected in memory of her two sisters, who she believes lost their lives because they were unable to overcome that impact. Growing up with CDV herself, Linda has a personal understanding of the profound feelings of loss, hopelessness, and feeling alone that are associated with childhood trauma and has experienced firsthand the cycle of violence, fear, and uncertainty that all too often persists for those who have such experiences. Welcome, Linda. We're so glad you're here. Thank you, Kelly, and thank you for that warm welcome. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm really excited to share what's the most unknown, unaddressed child adversity, and most people aren't even aware of it, which is really, really um, tragic in many cases. Oh, it sure is. It sure is. So, you know, you have a personal history, and now the professional story. So tell us, how should we become aware and what should we, how should we get started? Well, I think, first of all, let me clarify so people really know what the definition is. That when most people think of domestic violence, they think about women, abuse, and pain, and they really forget about the kids living in the home, growing up, witnessing the violence between parents or violence directed toward a parent from a significant other. So childhood domestic violence, which is what I specialize is, is children who grow up living in homes witnessing violence between parents and or a significant other. Oftentimes people think because the children are untouched, they're unaffected. However, it has a profound and often tragic impact on children for the rest of their lives. In fact, UNICEF says that it's the most pervasive human right challenge of our time. And you look at the statistics, Kelly, kids who grow up with CDV, childhood domestic violence, are six times more likely to commit suicide, 50 times more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol, 70 times more likely to commit a crime. And this is really, really key. It's the single best predictor of whether somebody is going to become a perpetrator or victim later on in life. Single best predictor of repeating the cycle of becoming a victim or perpetrator. And there's a lack of awareness, which is which sets kids up to not even know how vulnerable they are to repeating the cycle. Right. I, it brings to thought to mind nature and nurture, and you become or witness your environment. Absolutely, because abuse is a learned behavior. And when you grow up witnessing and living in constant fear, 
when the two most significant people in your life model that kind of behavior, you internalize that as normal. It becomes internalized in the brain, literally changes the brain chemistry, as we know from all the trauma research. And it feels like it's normal. It feels like it's right. It feels like that's what love is because that's what you've learned and you internalize it. And keep in mind, we're talking about a developing brain. Brains aren't even developed until age 25. Oh, goodness. So you were giving some statistics with UNICEF. So approximately how many people are impacted? Then? Well, tragically, 1 billion lives around the world globally are impacted. And according to UNICEF, 20 275 million children are currently impacted in and an estimated 40 million adults grow up in homes like this. So that's one out of seven adults. Oh my. oh, my. So it's really profound, and it has the lasting impact, even if the kids do not grow up to, uh, like I repeated the statistics, to become a statistic. It has a profound and... Um, of impact on their emotional and physical health. These kids often grow up feeling very alone, sad, hopeless, angry, frustrated, unattractive, unlovable. And the saddest part is in my practice, they don't even know why they feel the way they feel. Right. You know, the it's first their step, norm. Right. It's their norm. And we've not been able to label it, which is so critical that we label it um, and diagnose it so that we can treat it. We can't, we can't obviously treat something that we don't diagnose or acknowledge. Right. Right. Hmm. So what does this childhood adversity most predict? You know, you were saying that it predicts it's, behaviors and that sort of thing, but what does it most predict? Yeah, that's a great question because that's really what I want people to know today. The one take home, and thank you for asking, that childhood domestic violence, or the acronym CDV, is the single best predictor of becoming a perpetrator or victim of domestic violence later in life. Single best predictor over sexual abuse, gang violence, any other kind of childhood adversity. Yet, unlike the other childhood adversities where there's 95% awareness, there's less than 15% awareness of the impact of growing up witnessing the violence has on kids. Wow. So breaking the cycle or continuing the cycle? It's, it's that predictive. Hmm? What is the percentage of awareness um, for CDB? You know, well, again, we're it's less, talking briefly. Yes. Again, it's less than 15% awareness. And as you know, how can we um, heal something we don't even acknowledge? The first step is awareness. So it's critical that people really begin to understand what this is, and one of the, the gold standard, the ACE study, um, looked at all the childhood adversities and found that CDV was the least known, least addressed childhood adversity. It's almost like what, what uh, smoking was to lung cancer 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, CDV is to domestic violence. So what are some signs or how can we be aware or what, how can we increase awareness? Well, that's a great question. The first thing is awareness and to ask the question. You know, I highly recommend people go to cdv.org. cdv.org is the Childhood Domestic Violence Association. It's based in New York, close to you. Wonderful, wonderful um, association. It's the leading 
organization that treats CDV. Brian Martin, who's the founder, has written an amazing book called Invincible, and it's the first book that addresses this child of diversity. I will tell you, Kelly, unequivocally in my practice, which is here in Atlanta, I treat mainly CDV patients and childhood trauma and sexual trauma. Every patient who reads Invincible says, wow, this is amazing. This changed my life. How come nobody ever told me about this? And I said, well, unfortunately, it's not been talked about because, as you know, most people think about domestic violence. It involves the women. And they really forget about the kids. They think because the kids have not been touched or somehow there's no impact. It's like PTSD to veterans. Of course, they're impacted when they go right. off to war and witness this violence and live in fear. So these kids grow up living in constant fear, uncertainty, and they feel really alone because nobody's talking about it, which increases the isolation, the depression, the suicide, the fear, and the statistics of repeating the cycle. Interesting analogy. Yes, the PTSD. Absolutely. Of it all. Absolutely. Many of these kids, well, think about it. I mean, how can you grow up in this kind of environment, witnessing your parents physically or non-physically, emotionally, you know, with words, so true. mentally, oh, so true. and verbally abusing each other? and not live in fear, and not feel hopeless, and not think that, is this what love is? Is this, this is, this is learned behavior. Right. They don't know the difference. They don't know anything different. They don't know anything different. Literally, they've never witnessed anything different. And so they're going to repeat what they've learned, what they've internalized until we start raising awareness. And I'm so excited that I've introduced in memory of my two sisters, a project that people can help join us, help children and families to find hope after loss and domestic violence. And that's called projecthopebear.org. I'm just thrilled. My goal in memory of my sister was to create um, a project that could really help children and families address this unrecognized issue and bring the kids hope and comfort them. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. I know we were going to save this till towards the end of the podcast or series, but tell us a little bit about it now while You've mentioned it. Tell us about the Project Hope. Project Hope Beer, it's a brand new um, uh, pending 501c3 organization that I created and developed in memory of my two sisters. And it's specifically the Project Hope Beer is intended to help children and families find hope after loss and after domestic violence. So it's a teddy bear, it's really soft and cuddly. It deals with all the senses and and we're looking it's one way people can help children um, give them a teddy bear show them that they care and bring hope to these kids because as you know hope is one of the single biggest predictors of recovery people need to have hope so true you know i volunteer at a, a at-risk youth home center. And there's, at any given time, 30 youth living there. And um, they would love a, a hope bear, you know? Um, that's a beautiful thing you're doing. Oh, Absolutely. thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited. It's got the you are not alone because most kids and adults feel so alone. And it, I, I patented the two hearts ribbon for hope and memory, my two sisters. And I have to say that it's soft and cuddly. It's even got a really se a secret compartment in the back of his uh, neck under his ribbon where you can put a keepsake to someone you loved in there who you lost to domestic violence or homicide or suicide. And it's very, very meaningful because it's one way to acknowledge um, 
the death and get people talking about their loss, sharing their story. And in psychology, we call it a transitional object that pro pro provides a lot of relief and comfort and hope and acknowledges this forgotten population. I think that was what was most important to me in memory of my two sisters, that there was nothing that was really acknowledging this most unaddressed, unacknowledged, um, devastating and tragic childhood adversity. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm so sorry. Yeah. Well, you know, thank you, thank you very much. And you know, it's it's really about turning um, adversity into advocacy. And I know that my sisters are looking down, and they're you know they're they're with me. And I I feel like this is a passion of mine. I'm passionate about helping women who grew up with CDV and or any kind of childhood trauma heal and reach their full potential. It's just critical. Most of these kids, like I said at the beginning of the our podcast or interview, most of the women that come into my office, my practice, and men and couples don't even know why they feel the way they do which I think is so tragic. Unlike the other thing, if you go to the doctor, he tells you, okay, you know, you have this and you understand, okay, you've got the certainty. Now I know why I'm feeling this way. Right. This is really tragic when you don't know why. You don't have that certainty and yet you're feeling very alone. Like what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Why do I feel like this? I feel really alone. And it's not talked about. It's not talked about, unlike sexual abuse and physical abuse and domestic violence, childhood domestic violence, the kids growing up in these homes are not asked, what's it like growing up in your home? Do you right. experience, what kind of experience do you have? I strongly recommend going to cdv.org and there's wonderful information that can people can take for free. There's an online um, program for free to be the one to help a child. Um, for any of those listening who really are struggling with feeling anxiety, suicidal, trauma um, that are in the Atlanta area, I, I love I love healing women. It's my passion and certainly would love help for um, creating these bears that we, my, my goal is to give 5,000 bears out this year and someday give every child who lost a loved one to violence or experience childhood domestic violence all over the world a hope bear. Oh, that, that'd be beautiful. That, that would be beautiful. Um, Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. Absolutely. And dare I say your sisters are proud of you too, not just looking down on you and watching over. Well, I feel their energy. I feel really, yeah. I felt called. I really felt called. It's part of the reason I'm on the board of the Childhood Domestic Violence Association. And I came down here in Atlanta in 2015 because two of my sons, I have three sons, two of my sons were born down here. And I literally felt called by God to come down here to start the first chapter in the country for the Childhood Domestic Violence Association. I have an amazing board of dynamo women. They're pioneers and we're training clinicians and it's amazing partnering with different groups Georgia State University and different domestic violence shelters and hospitals to build the awareness and train clinicians because as you know we have to be able to train clinicians. Most training programs don't even deal with this in a really, um, they don't have classes that talk about the impact, the profound impact it has on these kids. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you. You know, as nurses, we are required to take um, child abuse classes annually to maintain our license. Now, we observe for the physical signs. What can we observe or what should we look for for signs for 
children living in these types of domestic abuse? A very simple question. What's it like growing up in your house? What's, what's it like growing up in your house? It's a very simple question, and it's very rarely asked. Children will tell you, well, mommy and daddy fight a lot of the time. I'm scared. I feel like it's my fault. Maybe, you know, children naturally are going to internalize there's something wrong with them when they see their parents fighting. That is a natural uh, developmental primary reaction to blame themselves. And so that gets manifested. Keep in mind, children internalize their self-image by the time they're six. So by age six, they've already internalized. This is my fault. It creates and perpetuates this kind of self-blame the self-blame that erodes the self-esteem and makes these kids so vulnerable to blaming themselves, feeling so hopeless and so alone, having a lot of anger and resentment, having a lot of sadness, and there's no place to talk about it, especially for boys that we know. When we look a lot at when we look at a lot of the school shootings, a lot of the kids in those instances grew up in families where they witnessed the CDV. And as a culture, there's something every one of us can do by raising awareness and talking about this. Okay. It's 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 really critical um, that we that we help um, these kids find the hope and help them heal to break the cycle. And it only takes one person, one person. It doesn't take an amazing amount of time. It takes one person to make a difference. Ask by, start by asking the question, what's it like growing, in your, growing up in your home? Go to the online sites that I've described, and you, there's all this free, incredible information where you can learn about it, because people are so afraid what to say, especially to kids who have lost a loved one to domestic violence. One of the things that I would say is, and I've got this on the site too, the projecthopebear.org site, what not to say is just as important as what to say. Right. Not say, oh, they lived a long life or what age was your mom or talk about what happened to you. Do not, do not, do not. Listen, 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 listen. Let that person share their story. That is a huge part of the grief process, allowing the person to share their story and validating their story. That's the first step to healing. Okay. Well, such valuable information. So to recap, let's do this. What websites? Project Bear. Tell us again. Uh, uh, yes, let me do that. Yeah, thanks for asking. It's um, projecthopebear.org. So www.projecthopebear.org is where you can donate to raise money to help us manufacture the teddy bears that are adorable. Um, and I should have them right in front of me. Um, He's adorable. If you go to the site, you'll see him. He's really soft and cuddly. He's 12 inches. He's got a blue nose. Patients love him. He's got the awareness ribbon on his paw, foot and the you are not alone. And then mostly for information, educational information, please go to cdv.org. Wonderful, wonderful website. Amazing. It's the leading organization that focuses ex exclusively on on children who grew up with CDV. It's not an afterthought. 
It's not like the stepchild. It's the kids are not forgotten. The kids are the primary focus. And of course, if you're struggling, if you need therapy, go to uh, grief.com is another great website. Um, David Kessler does a great job at teaching people about grief and loss. And if you're struggling with CDV, I'm happy to help you. It's my passion. You can go to web, my website. It talks about all the different kinds of treatment I use, CBT, DBT, a lot of acronyms I don't want to bore all your listeners with, but they're all evidence-based treatments that work that work. And in, one of the things that I do want to say to your listeners, I can't do it for you and not but I can do it with you. You don't have to suffer alone. That was so sincere. <laughs> that well, was I, so sincere. That's beautiful. I keep saying that word today. I, I'm, I'm just oh, good. I, I, by you. So. Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity to get this word out. It's, it's the least I can do, truthfully. It's the least I can do to help people. And there's so many things that we can do that people underestimate make a huge difference. Asking somebody, how are you? Yeah. What kind of house did you grow up in? Sharing your story, being willing, having the courage, because everybody, every patient that comes into my office, I always say it takes a lot of courage to come in and share your whole story with a perfect stranger. Yeah. Well, I think it's my time that I spend with these at risk youth. Um, on a weekly basis, they have just, these children are so dear and they just need a chance. Absolutely. It, it, it's just, they need help. You know? Yes, yes. It's um, heartbreaking and they need to be validated. They need to be listened to, validated and empathized because I can tell you unequivocally, everybody that grows up with CDV and or the other sexual traumas or physical abuse, neglect, incarceration did not feel listened to, did, wasn't validated wasn't empathized with. It's not like people said, how are you feeling, Kelly? How was your day? How are you feeling? Oh, mom, I didn't have that great a day. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. It's not the message was, well, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Or to cover up and deny your feelings. Like somehow if you feel rage or sadness or anger or frustration, there's something wrong with you. Well, how are you not going to feel it when you grow up living in constant fear? Right, right, right. So, well, a call to action to our audience. Ask a question, right? Yes, absolutely. I would love to hear some questions and provide some solutions for people who have questions. Um, you know, that's how we start, by asking the question. There's no... What's it uh, like in your home? Is that Absolutely. A primary question. What's it like growing up in your home? What's it like growing up in your home? What's okay. the relationship like between your parents? Kids will say the truth when they feel like they can trust you. Now, kids are, you know, kids don't want to lose their parents, obviously. They don't want to get their kids in trouble. So to really develop a support network on cdv.org. It explains everything, the Change of Life program. It's a free assessment you can take, which is perfect for any caregiver to begin asking the right questions. Giving the child a bear, donating a bear to a child who you know grew up with CDV as a you know, to comfort and to acknowledge and to give that child hope is huge, is huge, is huge. Right. And it's not just physical abuse, it's emotional abuse, growing up with the emotional abuse, not just physical. Right. Absolutely. Kelly, that's such a great point. I'm so glad you asked me that because most people think because the violence was non-physical, 
that somehow it didn't have a profound impact. We know, according to the research, all the trauma research, that growing up with the physical and non-physical, the constant verbal, emotional, mental, and financial abuse has more profound impact because of the chronicity. In fact, a different research shows that girls especially that grow up with um, sexual uh, violence and emotional abuse, the invalidation has a greater impact on them than the actual physical abuse, the invalidation. Well, think about it. If you're always growing up being told, oh, you're wrong, that didn't happen, that didn't happen, you're making it up. You know, hmm. the child begins to really question and judge themselves. Well, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe, maybe it really didn't happen and sets them on a cycle to perpetuate that uncertainty, that fear, and the um, judging themselves, judging themselves. There's not something wrong with that person. There's something wrong with me. Right. Yeah. Self-esteem and everything like that. Absolutely. It has a devastating impact on self-esteem and um, self-confidence. I mean, think about it logically. How can you feel confident about yourself if you're growing up with fear and you're being told that there's something wrong with you and nothing is being talked about? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Lots to think about. And a call to action, everyone, you can just ask one question, one question. So, all right. Well, thank you, Dr. Linda Olson. And audience, don't forget to tune in next week. Always more to learn. Thanks so much. Thanks Kelly, thank us. you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. And good luck with the kids that you're working with as well. Oh. Good luck to them. I send oh, my, I my blessings to them. They're yeah. wonderful. And it's great what you're doing. It touches my heart. So thank you. Okay. Thank Bye. you, Kelly. Bye. Have a great day. Hey, you too. Bye.